I ranked every single dungeon encounter in Destiny 2, all the way from Shattered Throne to the brand new Ghosts of the Deep. Raids used to be Destiny's only endgame activity, until they released the first dungeon in Destiny 2's Forsaken DLC, and I think they might be even more fun than a lot of the raids in the game currently. From squatting up with friends for a chill no comms run, going in solo chasing the elusive solo flawless emblem, or farming out some master checkpoints for some artifice armor, dungeons have a lot to offer. But every dungeon does have its ups and downs, and the way I'll be ranking these encounters is by fun factor and replayability, taking into account both solo and fireteam runs. And by the way, I'm defining an encounter as something that drops loot on completion, so no Grasp of Avarice Sparrow Race or Prophecy Wasteland in this one. But leave a comment if I should count these too. Starting off with the Misery category, we have the Grasp of Avarice Fallen Shield encounter. I don't think anyone's going to be too surprised having this here. While the area looks amazing, and the actual mechanical concept of firing the balls through the cannon to damage the shield is really cool, it just loses me on the replayability factor. Having to find the servitor, grab 20 modes, dunk 20 modes, and then trying to wrangle the stupid ball into the cannon, it's just not very fun when you have to do it four times in a row. Or even more if the stupid ball decides it's going to go off the map instead of actually where you pushed it. Enough said. This encounter is miserable. Next up, we have the aptly named Chamber of Suffering from Pit of Heresy. This encounter is just plain boring. You sit there, you wait for the knight to spawn, kill it, you grab the ball, you dunk the ball, and you repeat six times. There's just not a lot to do, and it's often a lot of waiting around, especially in a fire team. Plus, the mechanics are far from engaging, and drag on for far too long. The chamber really is just suffering. Now, I'll probably get some hate for this, but I think the final boss of the new Ghost of the Deep dungeon is a misery tier encounter. Especially in solo, getting to the damage phase takes so long. And on top of that, her health pool is just so insanely high that you could spend an hour just on this encounter alone in a solo. Plus, it's absolutely filled with one of the most annoying enemies in the game, being the Lucent Moss, which is going to end everything in a split second. For fire teams, you can get to damage pretty fast, but the way she moves and teleports around at random during the damage phase makes trying to actually hit her incredibly frustrating. I do have to give some credit here, I do like the Vorlog part where you line up the symbol, pretty creative and pretty cool, but for me, that isn't enough to save it. This encounter, it just sucks. And with a two time from Ghost of the Deep, we come to the final Misery tier encounter on the list, the Hive Ritual. I feel like most of you will agree with me here that this should have been three instead of four rounds. Almost every time I run this, after dunking the third one, I'll start running off because it feels like it should be over. Everything is so far apart that even with sparrows or even well scanning, it takes a long time to get to each symbol. And that's if you and your sparrow don't get exploded by lucent moths again. Another negative is that being in a fire team doesn't really speed up too much about the encounter, unlike the final boss, so it doesn't really get any points there. Overall, this encounter just takes too damn long. Moving on to the bearable tier, we've got the Prophecy Cube. Now, on the surface, this encounter is pretty fun, but what I hate most is the RNG element. Sometimes, and without any way to prevent it, you'll just have to do extra turns of the cube, and it just kills the fun and momentum built up throughout the otherwise pretty fun and unique encounter. Something additionally frustrating is the way modes can just fall off the map, and the boundaries between the light and the dark can just make absolutely no sense. It can be hard to see exactly which one you're meant to dunk on. That's why I'm putting this one in the bearable tier. It can be fun, but mostly just frustrating. Now, I'm trying not to judge this one too harshly, as it's the first dungeon Bungie ever made, but the Shadow Throne first encounter kinda sucks ass. Its length and RNG elements mean you can be running all around the map for quite a while before completing it. Splitting up into team can make it pretty fast, but also pretty boring most of the time, as it's just waiting for the other people to kill that symbol. Overall, this encounter is pretty boring, just killing enemies, running, and waiting, but for the first ever dungeon, I think they could have done a lot worse. The Pit of Heresy Necropolis is an amazing looking encounter, with the scale of the sheer cliff face as you drop down being an awesome sight. Unfortunately, it's a pretty mediocre encounter, especially if you ever have to go up one of those lifts. They're very slow and clunky, and even being able to kill you out of the blue. The way it introduces the sword mechanic here is pretty good, killing each one of the enemies in a different way, but moving between the randomly picked rooms can be a bit of a slog. Add to that the sparseness of sword bearers and the aforementioned lifts, this encounter is just, just barely hanging in there. Now, bumping things up a tier with the decent encounters. These ones have a balance of the good and the bad that leaves them being, well, pretty decent overall. First up, we have the Kel Echo from Prophecy, which does actually have a really creative and unique boss fight, constantly making you move and adjust to keep up, however the moat section needing to wait for a bunch of knights to spawn, and his portal attack during the boss fight being pretty annoying with hitting you when it really shouldn't does take off some points. Overall, to me, this is a pretty decent encounter. Coming to the only fallen on this list, Captain Avarok from Grasp of Avarice is a pretty straightforward and boring encounter. 
boss isn't anything special, doesn't really have any special attacks, and while getting to damage isn't too slow, it's not really that fast either. Just a very middle of the road, boring, basic encounter. Not much else to say there. This one might be a little controversial, but I think the duality vault encounter belongs in the decent tier. I feel like most people might rate it a bit lower, but I think it's pretty fun and doesn't drag on for too long. And being able to grab two standards per round in solo if you're quick enough makes it enjoyable to improve and master, and the timer makes sure things stay decently fast. Other than that, it is a bit boring and normal with a ton of ads and the few mini bosses in between rounds. That rounds off the decent tier. Now onto the good tier, encounters I do actually enjoy a fair bit, but not quite up there with the greats. Rewinding from where we left off in Duality's Vault, we come to the Nightmare of Galran. Here the encounter does drag a bit solo, needing to do two rounds of deception killing before being able to get to damage, but that's really the only drawback. The boss moves around a ton, but it's pretty predictable and fun to fight, and the standard running makes it pretty quick to get to DPS phases, with not too much waiting around. I think this encounter earns a solid good out of 10 rating here. Sticking with some hive, we have Frysia from the Grasp of Avarice, another pretty basic encounter, but the boss is pretty fun to damage, moves around, and its attack is pretty threatening. Getting damage is fast and pretty fun clearing out the two rooms of enemy, so overall, yeah, this encounter is good. Would farm again. Vexing it up a little, we come to everyone's favourite reused raid boss, Akalos from the Spire of the Watcher. This encounter's damage phase is fun, you can get a bit more accurate as the boss runs away or chase him down, plus the 50% threshold extending the damage phase is a really nice touch. Unfortunately, the pre-damage phase does drag on a bit, connecting up all the wires, especially in solo, but they do add a nice level of mastery when you're able to get a fast route down. Plus, like Ghost of the Deep, solo health boss pull seems far too large, even now. Overall, I like this encounter, but it'd be a lot cooler if the boss wasn't plucked from the Garden of Salvation. Now we're going to get to some really fun encounters. Continuing the theme of Spire of the Watcher, both its other encounters are going to be in this tier. The Ascent Encounter is pretty fast and fun, and allows for a high level of mastery in memorizing and executing connections between all the nodes. However, the lack of anything else to do other than connect the wires really holds Spire of the Watcher back overall for me. Percy's, Spire's final boss, is pretty fun, with random nodes not really slowing anything down while adding more enjoyment and replayability, as it's not the exact same things over and over again like the Ascent Encounter. Getting to damage is pretty fast, especially if you can master where the nodes are. But the damage phase itself isn't anything special, although he definitely is still a threatening presence in and out of damage, walking around the place. Next in the great tier, the final encounter to rank from the Ghost of the Deep dungeon, Ekthar. Excuse the buzzword, but this encounter's enemy density is off the charts. They're everywhere all the time, which, while engaging, can be a bit annoying. And the solo health pool is again far too inflated. However, the mechanics and the getting to damage portion is pretty fast, and while a bit RNG with the symbols, I still find it quite enjoyable. Now, since this dungeon did just release, this rating might go down after playing it more, but for now, this is a solid great tier encounter. Finally, in the great tier, we have the Phalanx Echo. It's short, sweet, and to the point. It allows skill display and mastery, and overall, I find it quite fun. It does lose a lot of fun if you have to do more than one phase, as there's less of a chance to hit double cleanses with moats to speed it up, and it can be a bit repetitive. But with this tiny health pool, that isn't usually an issue. The small arena is also pretty fun to run around in, with the boss and the enemies always being there and being a threat. And that concludes the great encounters. Now, finally, for what I think are the yes encounters, the encounters where if someone asked me to do one, I'd say hell yeah. Starting off the tier with the Cabal Empress herself, the Nightmare of Keitel. While getting to damage taking four standards does make things a bit slower in solo, overall the Nightmare of Keitel is such a fun encounter, with plenty of enemy density and the timed Nightmare roll making stuff fast. Plus, the boss always being damageable during the DPS phase is a nice touch. To me, it's overall a really fun encounter. Taking a trip back in time to the Shattered Throne, both its bosses are in this tier for me. Volgath is a fun and intense encounter, which can be quite fun to master, running around and killing the wizards, then dunking to start damage. It's fun, it's quick, there's just enough to do, just enough adds and threatening enemies to be engaging. I really like it. And finally, for Throne, there's Duel in Karu. The mechanic here is quite fun and interesting, killing the knights to stack up your buff against the boss. It's really quite fast and quite fun. And, since it's the first ever dungeon, I do have a bit of a soft spot for it. And the final yes tier encounter on my list is... Zolmak from Pit of Heresy. This guy is a pretty damn fun fight, using the sword in each different way to kill the three mages and dunk the balls, the middle damage area around the crystal, and the way he plants his sword before wiping you if you stay there too long. Very engaging, very fun, and able to be mastered with a solo one phase. Need I say more? Well, that's about it. Hope you enjoyed, I'll leave the link to the tier list maker in the description if you want to make your own. 07 Guardians, 